Hello, welcome back to the Hallian 6 video tutorial series. And this is kind of part two of a two-parter. Please go back and check the LFO episode from uh, from my previous video because it's going to tie in an awful lot. In fact, that, that's exactly where we left it. This was the last uh, LFO that we drew in the LFO tutorial. But now we're going to start making more use of the LFO because we're having a bit more of a, an examination of the modulation matrix. So here it is, one of the sections of the zone tab. Now the modulation matrix can seem overwhelming. It looks complicated and mathsy, but fundamentally it's incredibly simple. It's a way to make one thing change another thing. And the reason why that is such a generic term is because there are so many things that you can use <laughs> as modulation sources. And similarly, there are an awful lot of things that you can change with those modulation sources. So because of the flexibility of the modulation matrix, it can seem that it's really complicated, but it isn't. It, you've got a very large like encyclopedia or dictionary of options available to you but each individual entry is really, really simple. And that's what we're going to deal with today. We're just going to baby steps our way through really simple examples of how to use the mod matrix. So let's start with what we talked about in the last episode, which was using the LFO to vary the filter cutoff. And if we press a note, in fact, I'm just going to go back to the LFO and simplify its envelope down to completely standard sine wave. So there's nothing unusual about that, that LFO at all. It's right out of the box. Now it's applying a variable modulation to the filter cutoff because we've told it to here. If we increase this value, the variation becomes more dramatic. We do more of the thing that we're being asked to do. Notice that the frequency never changes. It's always one second. One, two, three. It's the, it's the intensity that we're changing with this slider. Now what happens over the course of a single period is determined uh, to a large extent by this graphical interface over here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to vary from this minimum value up to this maximum value by using this, this line. We can apply different shapes of curves. We can select the beginnings and ends of curves. So what does that sound like? If I flatline this, see that's bright. That's duller. If we increase the intensity, we're basically, we're taking the cutoff right down. We send this up to the maximum. We're turning the cutoff knob all the way up. So in addition to being able to draw these lines using the little arrows, we can also do, you can see every time I move anything here, this is the min. So if I set that to minus 40, we get a corresponding change on the graph. Here's the max, 80. At the moment, we're operating in negative values, but we don't have to be. This is a bipolar uh, modulation value, which means it can be negative and positive. If we make it unipolar, now the minimum amount, if I type minus one, won't let me. The minimum value is now zero. What's the maximum? 100. In bipolar, we go to minus 100. 
Can I set minus 101? No, I can't. This range value specifies the area of this little diagram over which the modulation is going to apply. So if we can see, when I went, if I go back to 200, it's drawn the entire uh, hash grid behind. I've switched to 100. It's kind of grayed out the right hand side. And now we only get this bit of the modulation. And we're slowly reintroducing the rest of the modulation curve. I send that back to 100 and start increasing the offset. Then we're moving the rectangular band around which the modulation is going to occur. So we're changing the part of the, the modulation curve that we're going to use and we're not using the rest of it. And if I set this to 100, our offset is now halfway through the total maximum range. And you see we started off at a range of 200. And now we're oscillating between this bit and we're ignoring the low part of the curve down here. Maximize the range and we're operating over the whole curve again. Just going to set this back to a simple line. Now it's really easy to get confused with what this graphical edit is actually doing. You have to remember that this is an LFO that's the source and the LFO is a simple sine wave, pure and simple operating at one hertz. So with all of the things being equal, we get the full effect, the full kind of unfiltered effect of the LFO being applied. When we start varying the intensity of that modulation using this graph. We're applying a mask over the top of the thing that's happening in the background. So we've got a sine wave that wants to do its thing according to this level of intensity. And then the graph applies a further mask over the top of that, which says, right, well, those are my general rules, but I've been told to do this thing, which now I'm only going to allow the filter cutoff to vary within this smaller range of its maximum possible that the LFO would otherwise want to do. And there, basically the LFO is being suppressed because it says it doesn't matter what you want to do. I'm telling you that you only get to do this. You only get to apply um, a variation to the filter cutoff of this much. Now it is applying a variation to the filter cutoff. That sounds different. That's a duller sound than this one up here because we're catching the filter cutoff at a different point, but only by allowing a variation to occur over time do we introduce the capacity for the LFO to actually have any effect on the sound. You could leave that 45 degree line and never touch it and kind of get away with it. The modern matrix will take care of you perfectly happily if you never worry about these curves again. But you know, that level of flexibility does allow you to introduce extra variation to the modulations that you apply. Now then, everything that we've done so far has been varying the filter cutoff, but it doesn't have to be. Let's vary pitch. <laughs> Once again, that is our regular LFO being unaltered in any other respect other than the amount of modulation that we're applying via the LFO. Let's change the volume or level. In 
true Hallian fashion, it's not happy with that level of flexibility. It allows you to apply yet another modifier to this suite of modifiers. So just a, just a, a brief review before we introduce this new level of um, modulation. We've got... So I've dialed in a pretty intense pitch variance there. I'm going to apply a modifier to that LFO. So I'm going to select my user envelope. And if we have a look over at the envelope section, we've never used the user en envelope before. But I've drawn this user configured envelope. So it's not, not doing anything else. This is its only job. And one other thing that we need to do is because envelopes are unipolar, they go from zero to maximum. We need to click this little button here to make this user envelope operate in the correct range. We don't want it going into minus figures unnecessarily. It's just going to be additionally confusing. So now we have that pitch going up and down. Watch what happens. Now we overlay this envelope over the top of the LFO. See that high note, it's going really high. And now the maximum extent of its high note is lower. So the LFO is still oscillating, but it's oscillating over a different range. I'll do it again. There's our ramp. That's a really high note. So that's a shallow sine wave that's being drawn. Listen to the lowest note and the highest note. And then when, when it's at its high point, lower, higher. So when the envelope is at its maximum, it's basically stretching the amount, the intensity of the LFO and when it's at its minimum it's squashing the LFO and the amount by which it's squashing and extending it is in turn determined by the, over, the overarching parameters of the matrix itself. Now obviously everything up until now has been using the LFO as the source but we don't have to. Let's have the amplifier envelope affect the cutoff. What does the amplifier, amplifier envelope look like? Looks like this. Doesn't have to. Okay. We can then use an LFO to modulate that shape. Is the LFO cycling in the background, but we've still got the envelope operating over the top. There are 32 of these um, source and destination configurable options available to you. Each of them can be muted individually, or you can mute the entire mod matrix from up here, and you can make the entire window as big or small as you want. So it's one of those simple concept, incredibly deep implementation. You know, when you start applying two, three, four modulation effects on top of each other and you get this layered effect, it can be really d difficult to keep track of what's affecting what, but infinitely configurable modulation options at your disposal. That's all for this episode. Uh, next time we'll deal with the step modulator. This fellow over here, hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching.